Sharpie Meat. Meat. That is presented to my eyes, my nose, my hands, and my palate. I accept my duty to be a smoking mesquite, hot days, barkey judge. That would have just left it alone with what it was last year. Don't repeat all that. Okay. So that truth. Justice, Justice, excellence in barbecue, and, barbecue. and the American way of life, life. may be strengthened and preserved forever. Okay. Water. God bless it. Use your fingers. Make sure you're touching the on the side. Oh, Wait, you're No. Okay, my favorite would have been number two. It had a good smoky flavor. It, had, it was tender. It, it was uh, it was pretty well cooked. The sauce didn't overpower it. It was, it was a good chicken. Uh, probably my least favorite was number three. A little bit too peppery. Uh, a little bit overcooked in places. And uh, it, it didn't have as good a flavor, overall flavor, as the others. Uh, and the other three pieces of chicken, they, they, they were all very close. The only thing that would, would have uh, eliminated one was a little bit overcooked, one was maybe a little t touch undercooked. But other than that, they were all very good, very good flavor. Uh, it was good chicken overall. Wow, we had some amazing chicken this round. Um, I would have to say choosing my favorite was hard. It would have to be between number two and number four. Number two had was sweet with a little bit of smoky. Number four, though, was sweet with a little bit of spice, and I kind of liked that. My least favorite, if you want to call it that, um, was number three. Only because it was a touch too spicy, the fact that I still had heat in my mouth when I was trying to move on to my next piece of chicken made it a little difficult, but number five, my piece of chicken from number five was so incredibly juicy. That one I loved as well. <laughs> It was a hard decision. Uh, five good examples. Uh, it was hard between two and five for me. I liked uh, both uh, different sweetnesses, but uh, number two, I believe, was my favorite overall um, as well. I liked the uh, smokiness of it. Uh, uh, very tender. Uh, they all, five of them looked really well uh, cooked. If I had to choose a uh, least favorite, again, this is very close between the five, uh, would be number three as well. Uh, tough to put it in words exactly why number three did, but uh, I think the, the little peppery and um, uh, maybe just a tad overcooked. That's all I can say. I think all five competitors were very good, very skilled at appearance. Obviously, they've... Uh, I think most have been doing this probably before based upon appearance and how um, they presented. My favorite was number two. Um, for me, uh, there was a nice element of smoke. I'm guessing uh, some apple or mesquite in there, which differentiated itself from the others for me. It was very juicy, perfect bite through skin, um, um, and just a marvelous bite. Um, also, just a, a positive note about number five, um, the competitor 
used some type of device to get it to us very hot. And so it was actually temperature hot yet, and the juices still were flowing, which made us all, I think, talk about how juicy it was. Um, number three uh, for me was the least savor, overspiced, too strong of a marinade, overcooked, you could tell by the color of the skin inside of the chicken, um, and overcompensated for that. Uh. I would say the uh, best was probably a toss-up between five and one, but I would have to give five the advantage. It was it tasted very it, it tasted really good. It was cooked, in my opinion, very well. Um, it's what you're going to look for with chicken. You know, chicken normally scores a little bit higher anyway, but this is exactly it. And then, um, but all the entries were, you know, pretty close. The worst though was number three. Um, it was chewy. It was overdone. Um, they did put a little too much spice on the top and the bottom, both, and it got overwhelming. Um, but overall, pretty good entries. This was uh, an exceptional plate of chicken. All of them were cooked nicely. I would address tenderness first. Uh, as far as I was concerned, number one and number five were cooked very well, but number five was exceptional. It was juicy. It was tender. All of the skin on all five of the samples was bite through, which was perfect. Uh, well, there's no perfect in barbecue. It was excellent. Uh, as far as the taste, I thought that number one was outstanding. It was well balanced. It had a perfect amount of sauce. The sauce was tasty. The spices were fine. Uh, number three was very overpowering on the heat. Uh, number two had kind of a tomatoey ketchup kind of a flavor that stood out when I first bit into it and I had to score that down somewhat for that. Number four had a, a honey flavor that just was overpowering when I first bit into it. Uh, they just weren't quite balanced as well as number one. But other than that it was an excellent flight of chicken. Squeeze another one in there? Let me squeeze another one. Yep. 12 18. Q? Okay. That's your longest one. If you're going to put one across the bottom, the one last one you just put on is really long. Okay, on the first one, um, when I first bit through it, the pull was good, but when I went to the other side of the bone, um, it was a little bit tougher. I'm, I wasn't real impressed with the taste. That one probably would be my least favorite. Um, on the second rib, it was overcooked. As soon as I took my first bite, the um, all of the meat fell off of the bone um, and had a mushy um, texture. On the third, that one had a really good bite. Um, when I pulled it off of the bone, the bone you know had the little white specks in it, so that was really good. Um, I did like the taste of that one. On the fourth one, this one also had a good pull. This um, taste on this was a little bit sweeter, um, although it did have a little bit too much sauce for my taste. On the fourth, that one I couldn't even bite through it. Um, the taste 
was a little bit more on the blander side, I would say, but that would have been my least favorite because I just couldn't get a good bite from it. I think flavor-wise, number two was the best, but it was overcooked and it was falling off the bone, so I didn't like that. Number three was a little bit sweet, but it had a little bit of heat with it too, so that one also tasted good. And number five was just overdone and tough, and it had no flavor. Uh, I think I'm in agreement here. Uh, <clears throat> number three was probably the best for me. A little bit sweet, but it had a good, you know, it came off pretty good. Number seven or uh, number five, just dry and tough, and not a whole lot of flavor to it. I'm pretty much in agreement with them also. I thought that uh, two was just slightly overcooked. Um, flavor was there. They, they were all sauced really well. Uh, number four would probably have been my favorite. I just had a good bite to it, pulled, pulled off the bone nice. It was well cooked and uh, uh, good sauce on it, uh, although maybe a little sweet. Oh, my hands are sticky, I'll take a pass. Uh, numbers one and five, a bit tough, kind of nondescript, so I'll skip those. Um, the third one actually hurt my feelings. It was too dry. It was oversauced. Uh, almost makes me want to give up the, the game of barbecue judging. While number two, it, uh, it kissed my tongue like an angel. Had quite a bit of fat on it, much like a Kardashian, but it worked. Uh, the fourth one, busy, but not precocious, so... That's my overall feelings. Yeah. You're in the middle like that? Huh? Take that one, yep. No, I'll save that one. The front? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, wow, a lot of my, a lot of my kids. What? Yeah, huh? <laughs> She's pretty cool. Yeah. I said, you're going to retire. Fine, yeah. You retire. He said, yeah, he's a letter. He said, no, you're only working. I'm like, okay, okay. Well, this is 24-7. Yeah. You're about to go for like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. qualifying thing. Yeah. Uh, he's got friends. Look at they little, broke out a little prints just for you, dude. If this is good, good music. Absolutely. Oh, that's how you said to amp it up for this. Huh? You said to amp it up for this. Like, it's oh like no, let's go. ACDC or something. <laughs> what? Yeah, ACDC is good music, too. Rather be full than empty. That's the mistake I made down in the last one. Right? The pork was pretty good uh, the best were I thought four and five five was probably the best good flavor good tenderness um, four had some really good flavor but was just a touch over was a little bit overcooked and kind of falling apart um, not to the point where it tasted mushy but it was just not where it should have been um, and the worst was or the the one that I found least appealing was number one. The, the first bite, all I got was parquet. It was just butter. It's all you could taste. You couldn't even taste the meat, and it was obvious that it had been heavily injected. Um, otherwise, mostly pretty good. My favorite entry was number five. I found that uh, other than the appearance where it looked a little bit dark on the actual flavor, uh, there was no bitterness from the bark, uh, well balanced, there was a sauce to such a point that it had a nice shine but it wasn't thick, uh, there was a slight back heat that uh, just carried through. Uh, the texture, it was firm uh, but it was still extremely moist. My least favorite was number two. Uh, I found the entry to be quite dry. I found it to be bland, definitely in need of moisture. Um, 
I was surprised to hear my fellow judge dislike number one, as I actually found the chunk on number one to be very flavorful, not so much with the money muscle. Uh, I had more of a roast pork flavor to me. Um, but uh, again, agree. Uh, good entries. My favorite pork entry was number five. Um, just echoing some of the comments you've already heard, um, it, it did have firm texture, but it was tender. Had a very nice flavor, a little bit of spice there. Um, just the right amount of sauce, I thought. A really nice entry. Uh, my least favorite was uh, number one. I felt like, um, I mean, without trying to characterize the flavors, I just thought it didn't have a lot of flavor, actually. Um, it left me wanting more of really anything, salt or spice or, or any, more complexity, basically. It just seemed like a very uh, kind of middle-of-the-road flavor to me. Uh, it sounds like we're all pretty consistent. Uh, my favorite was number five. I thought it had a great balance of salty and sweet to it. My least favorite was number one. I thought it was very bland and not a lot of flavor in it. It had a fairly good texture, but the flavor just wasn't there. And continuing the trend, number five was my favorite. I really enjoyed the depth of the flavor profile. And um, sweet, but not overbearing and also spicy, but likewise, um, very good balance there. Uh, my least favorites were numbers one and four. Number one um, was my least favorite for its taste, uh, very bland. Um, just no flavor either from the meat itself or from the bark. And, and number four was exceptionally mushy, um, virtually dissolved within my fingers when I, I squeezed on it and uh, its appearance um, looked closer to burnt than bark and uh, that definitely hurt. <clears throat> well I agree with previous comments. <laughs> uh, number five certainly is a favorite and my least favorite I believe would be uh, number one and po possibly number two but I agree with all the previous comments. That's the Okay, my, my favorite among the brisket was uh, number three. Um, it had a, a very unique appearance, an excellent flavor, and uh, it was, the texture was, was excellent. Uh, meaning the doneness was, it was done perfectly. And I actually think I gave it nines across the board. And uh, the one I liked least was number one. Um, it was quite rubbery, chewy, tough. Um, and didn't have a lot of flavor. My favorite was number three. It was a surprising in the appearance because it was just chunks with no slices, but they were excellent with the perfect tenderness and delicious taste. There was maybe a tiny bit of fat, but really that just kind of added to it. It was quite good. And my least favorite was number five. It was extremely tough. Um, it absolutely would not pull apart. It was uh, somewhat dry in its appearance and was very bland with no flavor. My favorite was number four. It pulled apart nice and easy and the uh, chunks were very tender and all the fat was rendered out. My least favorite was number one. Couldn't barely pull it apart on the test and it was very chewy. My favorite was number four as well. Um, it had a wonderful tenderness to it. Really uh, pulled apart easily um, and the, the flavors were very, very nicely um, combined, very meaty. Um, my least favorite was uh, number five. It was a little uh, thick and uh, chewy, not, not tender at all, and uh, just modest uh, flavor. My favorite was also number four here. <clears throat> the flavor was fantastic, pulled apart very easily, had a lot of foul feel 
great taste. My least favorite was either number five or number three. For me, number three wasn't rendered out, so I got a big giant fat bomb when I tasted it. And number five was uh, cut kind of diagonally, so part of it was soft and the other part was rubbery. There wasn't a lot of beef flavor in it. My favorite was number three. I thought it was the best. It was very delicious, very moist, just a great little piece. Number five was my worst. It was very dry and dense in flavor. And it was fatty at the bottom. Hi, I'm Sterling Ball, but in barbecue I'm known as Big Papa, Big Papa Smokers. Got the name Big Papa because uh, my real day job is making guitars, a company called Ernie Ball, where I make guitar strings and guitars, sell them all over the world. And on the Ernie Ball forum, I'm known as Big Papa, or BP. So um, I got started in barbecue because I bought my son a smoker for Christmas. And so I had him ship it to me first because I wanted to make sure that I knew how to use it. I'm a cook. I've always been a cook. And I wanted to be able to show him how to use it. Well, I started buying more and more smokers. And the guys at work, Jody and everybody, would come over, assemble them. And when it was probably 11 in the backyard, they said, we're going to start a team. He said, really, that's a really dumb idea. And he said, yeah, can we call it Big Papa Smokers? I said, sure, but don't embarrass me. So they went out, five drums, they never cooked a brisket, and then they managed to get second place, completely drunk, in ribs. So this barbecue thing's easy. So they went to the next contest, came in last place. Thought the judges had it in for him. And so I said, well, I better go out there and see what you're doing. And went and saw him, and it was a disaster. So I said, listen, boys, you can't use my name if you're going to cook like this. But if you want to be really good or you want a chance at it, I can show you a couple things. And so I kind of mentored him and coached him. And that lasted for a year or so. And uh, they cook on all my recipes. And then one by one, they dropped, dropped out. They had kids. And so by that time, I realized I really liked it. So 2012 rolls around, and I decided I'm just going to do it on my own. So um, I cooked actually with Jody still. And we went out and we won the Royal that year. And then 2013, I cooked by myself. And then James, James Perez, the world's greatest partner, joined me. And from there, we've had a pretty good run since then. Um, and in the meantime, I put on the King of the Smokers, which I think is uh, the coolest barbecue contest in barbecue, most elite invitational. And then I put on the, the Smithfield guinea pigs, which are kind of turning back the clock a little bit where the meat's provided. It's a level playing field and the money's distributed wider. So I think that's kind of the future of barbecue. I think barbecue's gotten too expensive. But in the meantime, I'm out about 25, 26 times a year, all cooking to about 10 states. And I really enjoy the process. It's been really fun. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, everybody out here is interesting. Not, they're not very objective, but they're very interesting. Uh, it's met some great friends. I mean, all the elite teams, the Iowa Smoky D's, uh, Pigskin, Lucky, Steph, it's simply marvelous. Left Coast Boys, Johnny Triggs been great to us, Tuffy Stone. I mean, the list goes on. It's a pretty impressive group of people in barbecue. Oh, I sell a lot of rubs. The rubs are, um, see, I didn't take any classes, okay, which a lot of people do. And um, I created my own rubs. And then I was cooking next to Steph at Simply Marvelous a lot. So we started playing with each other's rubs, the combinations. And we came up with tongue-in-cheek the West Coast offense, which really bothered a lot of people across the country until they started using it. So I think that um, I believe that we have the most successful rub and competition barbecue now. Um, from there, I do culinary development for a chain called BJ's Brew House. And uh, that's a a billion dollar company with 170 stores and I have 18 food items on that menu. So I'm still designing guitars and so I'm busier than I've ever been but it's really fun. And the culinary side is really a blast. I'm Matt Dalton with uh, Left Coast Q. Our, uh, we started in 2010. Uh, we're out of Banning, California. We, we, our team consists of me, myself, my other teammates Mo Lyons and uh, James Miranda. Uh, we've been doing this, like I said, since 2010. Uh, Myron Mixon, we took his class uh, in Georgia, 
and uh, when we came back from there, uh, we started cooking, practicing every weekend, uh, and we went to our first contest in Bakersfield, uh, May of 2010, and we got Reserve Grand, our first, very first contest out of 54 teams. At that time, it was a state record in the in 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 California. Um, so it was a really a big accomplishment for us just to kind of come out of nowhere. Um, no one really knew us. Um, now uh, we know teams across the country. Um, it's been a, it's just been a great fun ride. Um, met lots of people, lots of great people. Um, what's kept us in barbecue are those people and the relationships you build and all the fun times you have with everyone out on the trail. Um, it, it, it's it's fun to win. We've won. We've had our share of wins, um, but but it's really about the people. And and most people that are in barbecue would tell you the same thing. Jim Elser, Sweet Smoke Q from Lakeland, Florida. We're uh, out here today at the uh, Smoking Mesquite in Mesquite, Nevada. Uh, came out here all across the country to uh, try to get my uh, eighth uh, grand championship. Last week we got seven grands. We're uh, going to the uh, the Jack Daniels Invitational in October, so we're very excited about going there. What seven grand champions is, um, you get seven grand champions, you get an automatic invite to the Jack Daniels. The Jack Daniels only takes uh, one team per state, so if you win a grand champ, a qualifying grand champion in, in a, any state that's a, a, a state championship, you get a draw into the, uh, they call it, you know, a, a bung, a, a, a whiskey barrel bung. So they put your name in a, in a hat, they draw one team per state. So if you get that seven, you know, you're, you're automatic in. I've been uh, doing this for seven years and I've had a lot of draws and don't, and I haven't been lucky enough to get drawn. So the only way to get this is get that seven. So we got that last, last week and we're